Welcome friends to a new session on the course School Organization, Administration and Management. In this session, we will discuss the meaning of Staff Council and Student Council. We will also see the purpose, functions, activities of Staff Council. Completing this session will also enable you to understand the role and functions of Student Council and the relationship of Student Council with the principal, teachers and the parents association. The entire program in a school functions with complete cooperation of staff and students. Both staff and students should have their bodies formed to facilitate smooth functioning of the school. First we shall discuss on staff council. Staff council is a group of headmaster and all teachers in any educational institution constituted to discuss, plan and monitor all matters of academic interest and all other problems relating to the development of the institution and to recommend measures for improvement of the institution. The headmaster shall convene the meeting of the staff council at least once in every three months in an academic year. Headmaster will be the president and there will be staff secretary selected from the teachers. Purpose of staff council Facilitate communication between staff and college officials. Foster a sense of community among our diverse population. Collect and disseminate information pertinent to staff issues and to increase awareness of school policies. Participate, assist and advise in decision making process that affect the staff's relationship with the larger school community. Example, nominate staff representatives to serve on institutional task forces and committees when appropriate. Present ideas that originate from the staff to the school principal. Develop recommendations for new policies or changes in policies pertaining to staff. Promote and advocate staff professionalism and support opportunities for leadership development. Contribute to make making the school's educational community an efficient, fulfilling and attractive work environment. Functions of the Staff Council To help the headmaster to plan and implement all the ac academic activities of the council, to discuss problems of discipline and advise the headmaster on how to solve the problem, to advise the headmaster regarding action to be taken against pupils for misbehavior, to provide information regarding problems relating to working conditions and advise the headmaster in that respect, to advise the management on steps to be taken for the development of the school, to assess academic work periodically, to plan important festivals and celebrations and other co-curricular activities, to support the teachers whenever they experience problems and difficulties. Activities of staff council, distribution of workload of teachers, organization of curricular and co-curricular activities, Evaluation of curricular and co-curricular activities, celebration of functions, preparation of school timetable, discussion of day-to-day -day issues. Next we shall discuss student council. Student council is a union of students either democratically nominated by the headmaster to participate in designated areas of school administration. It helps teachers and school administrators in conducting literary activities, cultural functions and sports etc. It is the body to represent the entire students to share student ideas, interest and student council exists at the elementary, middle and high school level. 
in India, student councils have been introduced in almost all private and public schools. Student councils in India may be elected, nominated or selected after interview or written examination or both. Functions of student council The student council helps share students ideas, interests and concerns with teachers and school principals. They often also help raise funds for school wide activities including social events, community projects, helping people in need and school reform. Most schools participate in food drives, fundraisers and parties. Many members learn skills that were an extension of their formal education. School councils operate in many forms. In elementary schools, there are typically one or two student representatives per classroom and one presiding set of officers. However, Many secondary schools have one set of officers per grade level. An example of the structure of an elementary student council may include a president, a vice president, secretary, treasurer, sergeant of arms, fundraising officer, historian, boys representative and girls representative. These roles may be assigned or voted on either within the student council or by the entire student body. They may also reflect descending grade levels with the president in the oldest grade and so forth. Secondary school governments often have more independence and power than younger governments. Often a student government is overseen by a sponsor which is usually a teacher at that particular school. Most junior or middle school student councils have a constitution of some sort and usually do not have a judicial branch. Compared to elementary school councils, junior, high and high school councils generally have fewer people. In some schools, a student council representative is assigned to each class. That person passes on requests, ideas and complaints from students in that class to the student council. In other schools, the elected class officers are automatically members of the student council. Student councils usually do not have funding authority and generally must generate their operating funds through fundraisers. Some student councils have a budget from the school along with responsibility for funding a variety of student activities within a school. Why should we have a student council? The Education Act 1998 recognizes that student councils are an increasingly common feature in post-primary schools and have worked to the benefit of many schools. The Act seeks to extend the success of this model to other post-primary schools throughout the country. Students have a valuable contribution to make to the effectiveness of their school and their involvement in the operation of the school and is itself a valuable part of the education process for the students. A student council provides an opportunity for students to engage in a structured partnership with teachers, parents and school managers in the operation of their school. Research indicates that student councils can improve academic standards and reduce dropout rates in schools. Student councils can create a sense of ownership of the school and its activities among the student population. The establishment of a student council gives students an opportunity to acquire the sort of communication, planning and organizational skills which will be of benefit to them in their future lives. It enables students to take responsibility for projects and to demonstrate that they can manage and bring some such projects to successful conclusion. Moreover, 
the contribution made by a student council to the development of school policy in a number of areas can have significant benefits for students and the school. School policies are far more likely to be successful where they are clearly understood and accepted by all partners within the school community. The Education Act recognizes that students of a school will take the lead role in the establishment and operation of a student council, although the Act also provides an important role for the Board of Management in supporting the establishment and ongoing development of the student council. At the end of the day, a student council will thrive only if students themselves are committed to the concept and to making it work. The Role of Student Council The main role of a student council as set out in the Education Act is to promote the interests of the school and the involvement of students in the affairs of the school in cooperation with the board, parents and teachers. A student council will set its own objectives which will vary from school to school. Some general objectives could include to enhance communication between students, management, staff and parents, to promote an environment conducive to educational and personal development, to promote friendship and respect among pupils, to support the management and staff in the development of the school, to represent the views of the students on matters of general concern to them. A student council will identify activities that it would like to be involved in organizing although the final decision of the activities of a student council should be agreed with school management. Many schools that do not yet have a student council may already have a well established class captain, prefect or mentoring system. In some schools, students play a valuable support role for school management for example, by assisting in the running of the school shop or library or helping to maintain order in corridors between classes and during breaks. The Education Act provides that a student council shall act in a cooperation with the board of management, parents and teachers. A student council should not through its activities interfere with or detract from the authority of school management or the teaching staff of the school. It is therefore not a function of a student council to discuss or comment on matters relating to the employment or professional affairs of the principal, teachers and other staff of the school or to become involved in any issues that fall within their professional competence. The Student Council and the Principal the role of the school principal is of central importance in an establishment and operation of a student council. In assisting the board of management in the development of school policy and in working with teachers and parents to implement it at day to day level, the principal is centrally placed in all aspects of the school's operations. In the initial stages, the principal together with the other teachers can assist in the development of a student council in several ways. For example, by discussing with students the role of a student council and the role of individual representatives on the council, by facilitating the holding of elections and by advising on an appropriate constitution or statement of objectives. As the council develops and begins to expand its role, the principal will assist in guiding the council's development so as to allow for a constructive and purposeful council. More generally, the principal can promote a school culture which recognizes the potentially valuable input that students can make through a student council into the development of the school. The student council and teachers. Developing a spirit of partnership and cooperation between a student council and teachers has benefits for both. 
the student council can play an important role in recognizing and supporting the work of teachers. Similarly, the interest and support of teachers will be of great value to a student council, particularly during the early stages of its development. It is generally desirable for a member of the teaching staff to attend meetings of the council. The support and guidance offered by a teacher will be very useful to a council when planning its activities and providing for a teacher to attend council meetings will help to build a cooperative and good working relationship between students and staff of the school. Student Council and the Parents Association The Parents Association can make a significant contribution to the development of a student council by encouraging and supporting students in the establishment of a council and by supporting the council in its activities. A student council may find it useful to meet with members of the Parents Association from time to time or to invite a parent's representative to attend council meetings or to assist it in particular activities. This will help to ensure good communication between the student council and the parents association. Let us now discuss the key functions of student councils. The functions and activities of a student council should support the aims and objectives of the council and promote th the development of the school and the welfare of its students. In planning and undertaking activities during the course of the school year, the council should promote the interest of students among the school administration, staff and parents, help to share the burden of teachers to maintain the discipline, make teacher-pupil relation friendly, to participate in developing the school educational projects and to promote it to students, to promote and encourage the involvement of students in organizing the school activities, to consult students on any issue of importance, to inform students about any subject that concerns them, helps to develop democratic values, promotes personality development of students, to officially represent all the students in the school, work closely with school management, teachers and parents, involve as many students as possible in the activities of the council. There is a wide range of activities of benefit to the school community which a student council may wish to undertake and some of which are 1. Representing the views of the student body to, to the school management. This should be one of the fundamental aims of every council. It involves talking and listening to the student body, considering their views and concerns and discussing these with the school management on behalf of the students. Two, Promoting good communication within the school. Improving communication within the school community is a shared responsibility and a student council can contribute to this process. Making presentations at staff meetings to keep staff informed of activities, keeping a student council notice board or organizing a regular newsletter are just some ways the council can communicate with the students, school management, staff and parents. 3. Supporting the educational development and progress of students. A student council can contribute to the learning environment for students in the school by for example, setting up study groups for students in exam classes or homework clubs or organizing lunchtime activities such as language clubs. Fourth, assisting with induction and or mentoring for new first year students. Starting secondary school is a challenging new experience for first year students. A mentoring program where senior students help new students to find their feet can help their integration into the school community. Fifth, 
contributing to the development of school policy. The student council can actively contribute to the development of school policy in a wide range of areas such as bullying, uniform requirements, behavior code and extracurricular activities. The council could form subcommittees to consider in individual policy issues, to consult with students, staff and parents on those issues and to represent the council views on those issues to school management. Sixth, assisting in school sporting and cultural activities. Student councils can assist in organizing and developing sports and cultural activities within the school, for example, sports days and drama or musical events. Seventh, assisting with or organizing fundraising events for charity. Student councils can organize events both within the school and involving the wider community for the purpose of raising money for designated charities. 8. Liaising with student councils in other schools. It may be useful for a student council to liaise with student councils in other schools, particularly in the organization of sporting and cultural activities and when fundraising for charity. An existing student council could have a useful role in helping and advising a newly formed student council in another school. We shall now discuss some guidelines for boards of management on the establishment and dissolution of student councils. Establishing a student council. Where students in a school notify the board of management that they wish to establish a student council, the board of management should provide them in a timely manner with a copy of the rules it has drawn up in accordance with these guidelines. Where students have not yet taken the initiative to establish a student council, the board of management acting through the school principal and teaching staff shall encourage, facilitate and assist students in doing so. Nominations and Elections The Board of Management or the Principal acting on its behalf should set a date for the election of representatives to the Student Council. All students in each class or year having a representative on the Student Council should be entitled to stand for election to the Council. A Board of Management may, at its discretion, make provision for the principal or relevant teacher to veto a nomination. As such, a right should be exercised with caution and only in exceptional cases. The Board of Management in its rules should clearly state the circumstances in which any veto may be used. Nominations for election should be made within a reasonable period before the election as specified by the board. Voting may take place during class time, break or after school. The holding of elections during class time is at the discretion of the board of management or principal as the case may be having regard to the views of the staff of the school. All voting should take place by secret ballot. The counting of votes should take place under the supervision of a member of the staff of the school or a representative of the board of management or a parent designated for this purpose. In the case of junior classes, provision may be made for senior students to supervise the counting of votes. First meeting. The board of management should provide in its rules for the convening by the principal or a designated member of staff of the first meeting of each newly formed council. The first meeting of a newly formed council should take place early in the school year or as soon as possible after the conclusion of the elections throughout the school. In general, where elections take place at the start of the school year, the first meeting of the council should be held within three to four school weeks of the election. Constitution The student council may make rules governing its meetings and the business and conduct of its affairs, but it shall consult with the board of management before doing so. 
such rules may include the drawing up of a constitution. Where a student council does not already have a constitution in place, it should be encouraged to draw up one. Dissolution of a student council The board of management rules will provide for the dissolution of a student council where the council's term has expired or in exceptional circumstances before the expiry of its term. The rules drawn up by the board should state clearly the grounds on which the board may consider dissolving the student council before the expiry of its term of office. Dissolution should happen only in specified circumstances and on grounds of a significantly serious nature such as where a significant number of the council members have been involved in a serious breach of the school's code of behavior, where serious irregularities have occurred in the election of the council, where the activities of the council have endangered the welfare of staff or students of the school, where serious financial irregularities have occurred. Where a board is considering the dissolution of the council before the due date, the board should seek the views of the staff of the school and the parents association prior to making of the decision. Adequate notice should be given to the council and the reasons for the dissolution clearly explained. The student council should be given the opportunity to appeal the decision to the board of management or patron in accordance with established local appeals procedures. Let us now summarize our discussion. The headmaster is the chief executive in the school. Sharing of his or her responsibilities is the key to success. To be more democratic in administration, it is advisable to organize a staff council to advise the headmaster. Staff council is to advise headmaster in matters of school administration. We have seen that the entire program in a school functions with the complete cooperation of staff and students. Thus, both staff and students should have their bodies formed to facilitate smooth functioning of the school. He or she should consult the staff members regarding academic and administrative matters. This council should always promote the feeling of belonging which will create a cordial atmosphere in the school. In this session we dealt with staff and student council. The purpose, functions and activities of staff council were seen. The functions and role of student council were discussed. We also dealt with the interactions of student council with the principal, teachers, as well as the parents association. Thank you for watching this session of, on staff council and student council. See you again with a new topic. Till then, good day.